Hey everyone, the three of us just played four hours of cyberpunk each. We all picked different life paths and we all played slightly differently. In this video, we're gonna go over what differences we encountered during our play demo. So let's start with Ed. So I went with Corpo. It starts off with you throwing up in a sink and your initial story is um, you're a counterintelligence operative and your boss wants to sort of take down his boss. Unfortunately, um, the higher ups get wind of it and you end up getting your life to basically like torn to shreds, like all of your money, like all of your like insurance, your entire life that's been supported by this corporate job of yours is gone. And you end up on the street basically from uh, starting from scratch. You're already friends with uh, your partner Jackie at this point. And so he kind of helps you out and helps you get back on your feet. And then Tamor, you picked the street rat or yeah, the street kid. Street kid, yeah. Um, so my one, I start off in a bar um, and the street kid has got some connections and is like street, street wary and wily um, and is uh, from Night City or treats it like home and helps out one of the bartenders at the bar who's got a uh, ongoing debt towards one of the fixers and he kind of asks you to go speak to the fixer and try and help out and alleviate or get his debt settled entirely so you go and do that and you have an argument with this fixer who's an out of towner and you kind of throw your weight around as a local he shows you like this um, magazine and there's a sports car on there and he's like steal that sports car it's top of the line it will clear the debt so you go over you get pointed to the right direction by his inside man and then you start stealing um, and the moment you start getting the car, like this hand comes through the window and tells you to get out. And obviously you kind of like pull away and try to use the device. The device doesn't work. You get pulled out of the car, you're about to get beaten up, but then the cops show up and they kind of put both of you to the ground. And then someone like an elite or one percent shows up and is like, it's not worth wasting your time, throw them both out. Um, so you get chucked out onto the street. The person who pulled you out of the car was Jackie. And he's like, that's how you meet. I was told there's a montage that shows your progression through the years. It wasn't mm -hmm. actually in our, my demo. Um, I'm not sure if it was any of yours, but it's, effectively it's kind of like, a, we were told like a an animated sequence of some sort um, or a cinematic sequence that kind of shows that you guys stuck together for a while, did a bunch of jobs, you had a history, and then you pick up with the main story. Yeah, so I played the Nomad Path and the Nomad Path begins with your character V tearing off the, I don't know, the, the, the badge of their clan and heading into Night City in order to smuggle something into the city. And your car breaks down in this small town out way outside of Night City in this desert town. And you're trying to repair your car. You repair your car to meet your contact who has the thing that you're trying to smuggle in. Turns out to be Jackie. You meet him, talk with him a little bit, and then you and Jackie head to the border where you have to get out of the car and they do an inspection uh, and you have to talk to a, uh, uh, I guess, a border agent, I would say. And they ask you some questions, hop back in the car. And then as you're driving, there's a roadblock that they've set up and then there's a firefight that happens. And eventually that section ends. And then apparently we'd get the cutscene too. That would lead you into how the game starts. And then mm. once you've done those introductions, it sounds like the game for the most part is very similar. Like all three paths kind of merged. Now sit down and tell me what's got your shorts in or not. It's good to see you too, Jack. How you been? So with that out of the way, how did you guys play? I, I like to spec into like handguns specifically, um, handguns and melee and stealth. Um, and I found that I ended up relying on my handgun a lot because given that this is so early in the game, a lot of the stealth skills that are actually useful aren't available to you unless you unlock them with perks. So I found myself failing stealth a lot and ending up in a lot of firefights. Yeah, so I, I put together one of the classic, like, I don't know what I'm doing trash builds, <laughs> where I, like, I was just like, oh, how do I usually play? And I, I didn't learn the lesson that Ed clearly did very quickly. So obviously Ed is always smarter than me. Um, oh. But like I did the thing where I specced into stealth and specced into cool and body. So I was yeah. like, I can be sneaky and I can talk my way out of things and have a bit of charisma. Obviously I didn't think about the fact that it would take a while for that to come into full effect. So I ended up being a kind of a run and gun, kick the door in type person who is clearly incapable of doing it because I'm spec towards stealth. <laughs> so I created like the, a bumbling idiot of a V 
but it still it didn't lock me out of anything i was still quite capable like in firefights i was winning yeah, it's important to note that if you do pick up something that's not in your wheelhouse you can still get better at it by just doing the thing mm. so if if i like i didn't have any shotgun skills at all but if i picked up a shotgun and started shooting it a bunch you would rank up with the gun and yeah it's it's kind of like skyrim where the yeah. thing you do you get better at. it's funny you mentioned the cool thing because when i created my character i dumped all my points into cool right away and the person i was playing with the dev was like eh, may not want to do that <laughs> and i was like oh okay and i was like well what if I want to play like a net runner? So he had me spec into intelligence and I think technical ability was what it was called. But what I found out too is cool is connected to stealth. And I ended up using a lot of stealth because kind of like your guys' experience, I ended up being trash at net running just because I didn't really have many abilities unlocked. And I, and I imagine that's going to be a similar sort of experience for most people who start this game. Maybe not so much using firearms, but I think you're going to spec into something and then as you play, you're going to figure out how you actually want to play, at least early mm. on. It's important to note that we played the first four or five hours of the game of like what is going to be like a 50, 60 hour game. So a lot of the stuff that really will matter in the end um, doesn't really come into play. So like in, in the cool perk system, there's like a it's like a cold blood like uh, ability. So when you like get super cool, you have like uh, buffed abilities and that kind of stuff yeah i i the, the small amounts of stealth that i did manage to pull off was quite interesting because it was like a mixture of my stealth movement and also using the netrunner stuff um like hacking into a camera i i didn't realize that when you hack into a camera they're very frightening those cameras because they fire out yeah. laser beams laser and beams. like it blankets the entire thing and they move around and i was like damn how do i even begin to do this and i, I didn't realize that actually when you hack into a camera you effectively take it over and it's yours but it doesn't change the red laser into green yeah. to be like hey you're green now it's good um, now it's a good laser yeah it's a good laser so like doing the small amounts of i'm sneaking hacking that thing using it to distract enemies the way like the two different divergent styles of play kind of mesh together was really interesting so i'm looking forward to see how they can be paired up with like you know netrunners ability hacking abilities with the stealth and then stealth abilities kind of complemented by the you know powerful gun kind of like spec and that kind of stuff that was the one thing almost every encounter i started out by hacking into the local network or whatever it might be and once you do that you it basically when, when it highlights all the different things you can hack which i think because i was pretty early i wasn't able to hack a lot but there were like fans i could hack to distract enemies there were cameras you could hack you could hack certain npcs too to get other npcs to come by you could hack grenades to make them explode okay so we've talked about playstyle we've talked about origin how about how you guys just kind of played this demo if there was a lot we could do they didn't really put any restrictions on us at all in terms of what we could do uh so how did you guys spend your four hours my one was probably the most plain playthrough in that i jumped into it and just kind of followed the main path and quickly realized that it was a familiar path i talk about this in my written preview but it's it's the a lot of it was the missions that we saw in the um, gameplay demos from the past two years. Obviously, this is the first time we've actually played it for ourselves. I think the actual main path, at least to start with, is a really good um, example of the different facets of the gameplay mechanics. Like that first mission you do with um, for Dexter Deshawn, you get a good flavor of what is hacking like, what is uh, combat like, what is sneaking like, and you can start to figure out. I like, I've got a feel for the hacking. I really like that. So I'm going to spec towards that. Um, and then I use the kind of final moments to try and find some some like side quests that were interesting. The side quests are what everyone loves from Witcher. So I wanted one of those at least and I found that. Yeah, I mean, I probably took the exact opposite approach in that I didn't even really do side quests. I just roamed the world and messed around. Like the first thing I did when I got out of V's apartment is I took, I bought a knife from uh, the store called 21st Amendment and stabbed the cop because I don't know, he was out there and I want to see what would happen, which is something different from The Witcher 3, right? Because well, A, there's no cops, but also you can't just start destroying a town in The Witcher, right? Because Geralt is this character who wouldn't do that. But in this, uh, you have that freedom. I got I forget how much the warrant was and then it, I got a notification saying the, the, the NCPD are now after me. And that was pretty interesting just because, I, I don't know, immediately I thought of GTA. 
Um, yeah, like big sense. GTA vibes coming from this game. Uh, but, but you can also help the cops too. Like you can go yeah. past like a hold up or something and help them out. Um, there are a lot of incidental things happening in the city that you can just join in on. In fact, the incidental stuff remind me a lot of Red Dead. Like you'd just be walking around and there'd be a firefight between cops and gangs and you could help out one of the sides. You could just walk yeah. away. Or sometimes there'd just be a bunch of guys guarding a cache or something and you could yeah. go in kill them take it or occasionally with your when you get your upgraded eye i forget what they call it your mm. upgraded vision yeah. uh, you can actually see if there's a warrant out on npcs or, and you can just examine them and if you see warrant out on this arrest for this amount you can kill them and you'll automatically get that money transferred mm. into your account i i mentioned this to jake earlier but i was doing some of that kind of exploring and found an incidental thing which was a gang fighting each other a couple of gangs and i was like i'm just gonna check this out and the moment i realized i should probably get on with my my actual quest is when one of them threw a grenade at another one another one and missed completely and the grenade just landed at my feet and i was like i am i am not here for this i'm out after hearing about Timur's experience i wanted to go see a lot more side quests um but i think given that this is so early in the game and the game actually does want to put you through those main quests to get give you the breadth of experience there weren't that many other proper side missions that I could do. The side quests that I did find did look at sort of the kookier nature of like the cyberpunk world. So one had you get into a, like a fight club situation with these twins who had uh, merged their consciousnesses to be one person. Um, and there's a lot of like funny banter between them and like stuff about them sharing girlfriends and that kind of stuff and basically you just had to fight them both at once and then there was another one where a guy's augmented penis had gone haywire and you had to rush him to the ripper dock basically and like there's a whole bunch of car banter in between there and so that's that's kind of the the world they're trying to set up and it's it's not all like grim dark um, cyberpunk stuff there is mm -hmm. a bit of there's a lot of levity in there i think the most interesting thing for me is how much the corpo stuff played into the main quest but since my character came from a corpo background like there's that whole thing where one of your uh contacts uh sets you up she gives you like a like a credit shipped with a virus to like um like sabotage the the marauders mm. uh basically if you take the corpo path your character basically knows all the shit that she's gonna pull and you can just call her out on it and just oh. yeah just basically you are in the position of power there um which i found quite interesting when i did that i i decided to ignore her completely so the in the original demos they do that bit where they go to her get the chip and then go to the uh maelstrom gang and eventually things kick off so i was like i'm gonna just ignore that because i want to get into it as quick as possible um and the first thing i do when i meet with the bad guy uh is is or the gang leader is shoot him in the head and kill him like straight away because it's like um you don't have the money to do anything else or your your choices are either to kill him or get killed um and that knock-on effect is in the original when you did the kind of corporal route as well that dude would get away and then come back later with his exoskeleton and fight you this time around because he was dead there was just no one in that area like there was two guards who are just like knocked out and i was like i'm out um so like there is there is like very noticeable changes to what happens in a mission depending on how you do them in my playthrough i could not focus on the main path at all like almost every every corner i turned i was like oh this looks interesting and i'd get out and check it yeah. out just because the world is so dense but i found one small alley that opened up into this huge marketplace area where there are all these characters wandering around like it was packed and there was a guy on the corner who was like you know he's, he's, a, he's a sidewalk preacher yelling about how cybernetics are destroying people and the next generation needs to stop uh cybering up their bodies so they can so they can continue to live and and whatnot and i was watching him for a little bit because i was just like yeah sure and two like trendy looking girls walked up with phones and immediately started like oh this is the crazy guy everyone's been talking about like like let, let's get some pictures of them and they start like taking selfies with them and whatnot and he just keeps <laughs> yelling about it and he's getting frustrated and i'm just sitting here watching this whole thing play out it is a very dense and distracting world and trying to block all that out and actually look at the city for what the city is like is is very nice like i really appreciated how sort of it was built it's a very 
it's got a lot of verticality to it. There are a lot of stairs mm -hmm. and like twisty pathways. And there's like a lot of dead areas of the city, if you know what I mean. Like, because mm -hmm. there are a lot of freeways intersecting. So there's obviously going to be the quieter areas of the city, places that are a bit uglier. Yeah, because like it, it, it makes the parts that are bustling feel a little more real when the stuff, there's areas that aren't. Like I had this one interaction which stuck out to me, which I'm not sure if it was an accident, but I hope it wasn't. But like I was walking and I kind of drifted into a an area of the pavement where there was a cop nearby and he did not want me to be there. And he very aggressively shouted like, back up. But next to me was a, I'm not body shaming or anything like that. A very large man was next to me. And I don't know what happened, but like he freaked out and just started running. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to follow this guy. And I followed this guy for a while and he just kept running. And it wasn't like he was just running in a straight line. He was, he looked like he was going somewhere. And I was like, I asked the developer, I was like, is this, does this dude have a story? And he was like, I'm not sure. Um, and I wanted to follow him because he looked terrified and he just, he was like running. He's, I don't know how he had that much stamina, but I was like, if this was, <laughs> If this was like my natural playthrough, I think I would follow him for about 15 to 20 minutes just to see what would happen. But I think something else that really stuck out stuck out to me was the brain dance mechanic. Did you guys try that? I did not yeah. know. Yeah, so that's something I didn't really know about. I've been kind of limiting how much I see, but like at the risk of being reductive, it's the uh, detective mode investigation stuff from Batman Arkham Origins. Um, uh, I like to compare it to, did you guys play Tacoma? The follow up I to God? did, that's yes. exactly what it reminded me of. So just having a scene play out in 3D space, but you are free to move around and look at the other nooks and crannies, not in the main scene. So the idea is people are effectively taking their memories and um, recreating them almost like in a video editing suite and then selling them on for various things. Most of the time it's used for, you know, adult entertainment, but you can do weird things with it. And you can also do things like put yourself into another person's memory and explore it. And you can do that via first person or you can detach and just watch it all play out. And then there's like wrinkles like um, using, just focusing on an audio layer in the actual environment and listening to key conversations. They show you how it works by uh, making you live through a failed um, hold up scene where one person is where the perpetrator is killed and you figure out why that happened and how that happened and it's just a really cool yeah. wrinkle that makes me that makes me excited about the potential for like future cop and like the, the, the example that they gave us is obviously very early and very linear and I kind of am curious to see whether the story changes based on what you do or don't pick up like if you mm. go into a brain dance and don't pick up a clue uh, what happens then yeah it's impressive right it's too bad most of the BDs we do here are only good for flogging the log. In a lot of ways, it does feel like an open world RPG that you know players will probably be very familiar with. Yeah, and it's more more like in depth than The Witcher was by design. So like when I went into the actual like skill tree menu, I was like, wow, this is a lot. And they were and the developer that was on call was like, yeah, people kind of felt like there wasn't a lot of freedom to create their own kind of Geralt. They have buckets of like, you know, cool and body and, you know, tech and that kind of stuff. But within those, there's like multiple skill trees that have so many different small options to unlock, like passives and abilities and that kind of stuff. And for those that want it, I did double check and it seemed the the developer on our on my playthrough was like, you can do a no kill run of the game. So that's what I'll be doing. Well, anyway, those are our impressions of Cyberpunk 2077. We have a ton of Cyberpunk content planned and already up. So make sure to check all that stuff out on GameSpot. And if you have any questions for us, we will be doing a Q&A next week where we will answer your questions. So if you have anything for us, please leave them in the comments below, or you can find us on Twitter and we will try to get to all those questions next time. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later.